Hi, I'm Mark, and welcome to the current Outside Views report on Russia's war of aggression against Ukraine. Yevgeny Prigozhin had disappeared, gone into hiding. For almost a month, the otherwise show of oligarch and mercenary boss had given no public sign of life. He appeared for the last time at the end of July at the Africa Summit in St. Petersburg, where he appeared with the ambassador of the Central African Republic. And now there is a new video from Prigozhin. It was published on Monday evening on the Grey Zone Telegram channel, which is close to the Wagner Group. He is shown in a camouflage clothing, holding a rifle in his hand. Baron step landscape can be seen around him. A jeep with military personnel is seen in the background. Apparently, Prigozhin is in an African country. At least, that's what the statements he makes in the video suggest. PMC Wagner conducts reconnaissance missions to make Russia even bigger on all continents, to make Africa more free and to bring justice and happiness to Africans, says the Wagner boss. So Prigozhin is in Africa to make people on the continent happy with a gun in his hand. That may sound rather cynical, and it probably is. According to many experts, the main interest of the Wagner Group is to keep authoritarian regimes in power in Africa and, with their help, to plunder the natural resources of their countries. Russia's autocrat Vladimir Putin benefits from Wagner not only in Ukraine but also in Africa. It's about billions of rubles. For example, in the Central African Republic, where Wagner mercenaries are supporting the regime of President Faustin Archange Tuadera, who is ruling with an iron fist. So it may not be a coincidence that Prigozhin met the country's ambassador at the Africa summit in Russia. So now he's on site himself, having, having spent a while in Belarus after the failed coup attempt. And something else is striking about the video, Prigozhin's tone. Before the failed uprising at the end of June, when he probably wanted to persuade Vladimir Putin to depose the Russian military leadership with a violent march on Moscow, he cursed, whimpered and insulted, and he now appears almost humble. We work, the temperature is 50 plus, just the way we like it, says the Wagner boss in the, in the video clip. We are becoming a nightmare for Al-Qaeda, ISIS and other gangs here, he says. The wording is revealing. After all, Russia under Putin has always liked to justify military operations with a fight against terror. That was already the case at the beginning of Putin's tenure in the Kremlin, when he had to justify the brutal war in Chechnya in the late 1990s. The bloody war in the Caucasus sharpened his previous pale bureaucratic image and decisively helped him to be elected to a second term as president. The deployment of Russian troops and Wagner mercenaries in Syria was also disguised as an anti-terror mission, where Russian soldiers helped the unjust regime of Bashir al-Assad to murder hundreds of thousands of people and wipe out entire cities like Aleppo. So now, Africa. The continent has long been considered an important sphere of influence for the Kremlin. Putin is obviously trying to make up ground there that he is currently threatening to lose in Europe with the war in Ukraine. And the most important instrument there is the mercenaries of the Wagner Group. In the so-called Global South, Russia is still highly regarded, not only in Mali and Sudan or in the Central African Republic. Only recently, people in Niger's capital Niamey cheered through the city after high-ranking military officials arrested the democratic president and took power in the country. The people of Niger held Russian flags in their hand. The Wagner Group has also been active there for a long time. So it's primarily a fight against Western influence and against democracy, and less a fight against Islamic extremism, which is driving the Kremlin in Africa. Yevgeny Prigozhin is extremely useful for this. Many observers were amazed that the very rich oligarch survived at all after the deadly mutiny at the end of June. Putin apparently needs him as a compliant warlord on the equator. This fits Prigozhin's new sound in the video. He's humble, consensuous, acting solely on behalf of and for the good of Russia. 
We are hiring real warriors, he says, and we are continuing to achieve the goals we've promised. This is probably how the dictator in the Kremlin prefers to see his former chef. And if you want to know more about the current developments, the next video is right here in the end screen. I'll see you there. I'll be back.